Greetings all and welcome to another session of Speaking Through My World. Today I would like to look at the power that we hold in knowing what our rights are and then secondly look at how society at large can really help victims and survivors of abuse uh, within their own personal capacity. For starters, let's, let's understand and unpack what our rights are when opening up a case at a South African police station. And as we know, and as history has dictated, one of the many stumbling blocks that we have, have had to deal with in ending gender-based violence is the fact that we have hit a bottleneck when it comes to our police stations, the fact that cases aren't reported um, properly, the fact that cases aren't even opened in some cases, um, and, then, and then following the route of, of, of the investigation, and more importantly, on how we are treated as victims or survivors when we do want to open up a case. Now, the first bit of advice, and, and I need to acknowledge the WISE Collective, because this was an, an incredibly important piece of advice that they gave me when opening up a case, is that when you've made that decision, and it's a huge decision that you want to go to the, the judicial route and you want to open up that case, is that write it all down on a piece of paper. Write down as much information as possible, even if it's just um, all over the place and dates and times and everything. It's just because not only is the writing therapeutic, but it helps you really put things into a chronological order. And take your time in doing this. And then go back, see if the, the, the dates are, 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 are correct. Put as much detail as possible. This is also great advice if you want to get a protection order against somebody because you need to put as much information down as possible so that when the magistrate reads it, understands why it is so important for them to grant you that protection order, why it's so important to put this person behind bars. So once you've written that out, then if you can, accompany, get somebody to accompany you to the police station because the process is long, it can be daunting, and, and preferably if you do have somebody who can provide uh, psychosocial support or a counsel of some sorts because at some point there's a strong possibility that you might break down and you will need somebody to be there for you. On arrival at the police station, in many cases we've observed um, for some reason police officials will question your credibility. Now questions like uh, why are you wanting to open the case now? This happened a long time ago, unfortunately you can't open the case. Uh, this happened in a different province. You have to go back to that province to open up the case. These are all wrong. This information is incorrect. If, for example, you were violated in Durban, but you now live in Cape Town and you want to open up a case, you have every right to go into a police station in Cape Town, open up the case, and it is the South African police duty to then transfer the file to Durban or to the jurisdiction where it happened, and then you will get your case number. Number two, if somebody asks you why you are wanting to open, and this happens, this happened recently when I went into a Pretoria police station as to why they want to open up a case, because it happened such a long time ago, my advice is just to say, and this is also advice that came from the Whites Collective, is that, um, that you are now ready to take a stand and that it is your right to get the protection and to, 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 to have justice served on your case. Because a lot of the time these questions then lead into the victim or the survivor then doubting their credibility. Next bit, um, you obviously hand over your, your affidavit, explain why you've written it down so that they need to write it word for word. Uh, another point, which is a very strange one, um, and we've witnessed it in certain police stations, is perhaps take your own pen. Uh, that was one of the excuses that was once given to a victim, and uh, as crazy as it sounds, uh, but once again, that's just another tactic for, for a police person to not want to open up the case. The process can take time. In some cases, um, and we've, we've, we've noticed this in smaller police stations, or if it's a male trying to open up a case of assault or rape against them, is that there's a lot of mockery that might happen from, from police or intimidation or questioning you or victim blaming. Victim blaming by, by saying, well, 
Why were you out there at that time of the evening? Why were you wearing that type of clothing? These type of things have no relevance to the fact that you have been violated and that you deserve justice. If that does happen, of course, then take down the police officer's name and their badge number, and then you can try and put a, couple, um, uh, a complaint through to IPED. Uh, we all have our doubts when it comes to that. But nevertheless, the most important thing is that you know your rights. So if they do say this to you, in your mind, you've got to keep on saying to yourself that your pain is valid, that you have every right to be heard, and that these are just small stumbling blocks in trying to stop you from, from actually for them doing the work that they're supposed to do. After they've written out the, 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 written out the full docket and the full affidavit, read through it. Take your time. If they're rushing you, tell them to stop. If they're rushing because their shift is ending, tell them that is not your problem. As a citizen, it is your right to be them and they need to help you. Read through it properly. Get it stamped. Get it signed. Take a picture of the affidavit, every single page, so you have proof that the case was originally opened. Because we know cases go missing, dockets go missing, if there's no proof, and, and if it was a case that happened in a different province where you need to wait for the case number, that is where sometimes the, 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 the disappearance and the problems occur. So take that picture. Um, if possible, ask when when the case number will 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 will, will be then sent to you, and then you you, you continue to proceed with your life. Um, another another issue that we've seen is that there's also a lack of sensitivity. And um, in my case, with 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 one of our survivors this week, was that when the survivor started to break down in telling the story, the police kept on going and kept on asking questions. And granted, that is what might happen in a court case. But when you're getting the case open, you don't need to go through that secondary level of victimization. And that is why it is so important for you to take through your counselor or your legal representative. So that if any time you need to breathe or cry or scream, you should be given that right and you should be given that respect to do so. With moving on to, to other cases and how many people say, well, you know, how can we get involved and we don't have resources or we don't have the financial um, backup to help um, support organizations. We, what I always say is that look in your immediate space. How can you help within your immediate space? Are you acknowledging if abuse is happening within your family? If, if you see or you hear of a case that happened many, many years ago and you unfortunately bared witness to that or knew somebody who went through the same same experience and has spoken to you about that and you have consent to talk about it put that into an affidavit and give it to somebody who's speaking out because remember with with perpetrators especially uh, powerful wealthy even high profile public figures they have access to a stream of of legal team of a pr marketing team of, of um, people who are literally there who could just change the narrative and try and intimidate people. And if you don't have enough evidence for your case, but there's been a trail of events that are very similar with other people and other cases have been reported, that could also be helping a case. Reach out to the victim survivor and say, this is what I have, it's written in affidavit, use it, don't use it, but at least you're doing something. Because, and I've said this so many times, and many people have said this, is that prior to COVID-19, we already had a pandemic, and that is of gender-based violence, and that our country is in a crisis. And in order to get through this crisis, it's not just about government. It's not just about activists and, and NGOs and, and um, civil, um, civil servants and society organizations. It's about everybody doing what they can. And we've seen it in cases like, yes, 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 well, this guy's he's notorious for doing this. We know it's been happening for a long time. How do you know? If you've seen it with your own two eyes, you could be a witness in a very, very important and crucial case. If it happened to somebody that you know, that person might, 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 um, didn't have the strength to then open up a case back then. But if, you, if we've got galvanized support and collective support, we can then go up against um, and, 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 and add value 
in, 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 in crucial and important cases that are already on trial. And to the victims and survivors, know that your pain is valid. You know, we're already entering to another year filled with anxiety and uncertainties, and we're still carrying a lot of weight from our past. And we need to process that weight, and you process it in, in your own way, but also take your time in doing so. Because for too long, we've been silenced. For too long, we've been blamed for being violated. That narrative needs to change. We all need to do our bit. We all need to unlearn the patriarchal ideologies and misogynistic policies that we've been taught from a very, very young age. And for those that, 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 that want to show solidarity for somebody speaking out, show true solidarity. It's unfortunate we've come to the point where we're calling out, and we've all been called out, but when we are called out, listen, re-educate yourself. We're all human. We all make mistakes. If you're an organization that is pushing an anti-GBV campaign and saying we, we stand in solidarity with, with, with survivors and people who speak out, yet you go and hire a known abuser, check your facts. Time to, to, to create a bit of a shift. And, if, and even if it's, if it's something that you've overlooked or it's a mishap, that's okay. But then acknowledge that mistake and make an apology. Because we all need to do this together. Should you or anybody else know or need assistance, uh, assistance in terms of counseling, referrals to shelters, um, Another thing is also life coaching, because often we've been placed in, 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 in circumstances where we're violated, and going back to our place of work or environment can be incredibly triggering. And often many of us, myself included, where we can no longer work in a career or a job that we wish to, because either you've been, you've been blacklisted or pushed out, or you cannot cope with that environment. And that is perfectly normal. Because post-traumatic stress can attack your body at any point in time, and you have no control over that. So looking at other ways and what other crafts or, or skills that you do have, so that while you're going through this, this healing, you're also creating coping mechanisms to deal with that healing, but also able to survive. Because we all need to work, we all need to earn money. We all want to aspire to something, well, most of us do. And so that is also just another avenue, is looking at you, that if you've, if you've been traumatized or if you've been through so much and you're in this space and you feel that you've hit a dead end, sometimes that mediation with, with, um, with somebody else, just to guide you. Because often when we, in fact, not often all the time, is that when we've gone, when we've gone through this abuse and we've gone through this trauma, we block out what we call the low-hanging fruits of things that we, that, we, that we own. So whether it's a skill that we have or passions that we follow, because this trauma has consumed us, and rightfully so. And so life coaching or counseling and healing kind of like opens up that pathway. It lets, lets us smell those roses again. It also makes us understand and lets us be heard. Because for too long we haven't been heard. Too long we haven't been validated. And please, once again, your pain is valid. Should you need any, any guidance or referral or counseling or life coaching, please just uh, pop me an email that is letzatsihealing at gmail.com. And of course the details are on the screen at the moment. Thanks so much for listening. Take care.